In this video, we're going to be going over chapter one uh, in the text, the exceptional manager, what do you do and how do you do it? In this chapter, we're going to be hitting some of the general things as far as uh, what management is about and business, and also some of the things to think about for you and your career. Now, when you think about management, the art of management, it's basically getting people to work together to try to get something done, okay? It's the pursuit of organizational goals, making it efficient and effective. Efficient means you're cutting the costs, okay? You're reducing dollars. Effective means you're actually achieving something. There are a lot of rewards for actually studying management. If you want to move into management as far as your career is concerned, you need to understand how to deal with organizations, okay, both inside and outside, how to relate to your own supervisor. How are you going to work with the person that you're reporting to? How to work with your coworkers, all right? And then also thinking about managing yourself and some of the things that you're doing, your motivation, your work ethic, that sort of thing. There's a lot of rewards that come with it. Uh, experience a sense of accomplishment. You might learn something that you never learned before and be able to do th some things that you could not do before. When you think about the management process, uh, it, there's basically four steps to it. It used to be five, now it's four. Planning, organizing, leading, and controlling. Planning, setting the goals and the direction as far as what it is you're trying to do getting the people together and getting them the resources necessary in order to achieve things, motivating and directing those folks to get to that point. And then at the end, all right, so are there any changes that are necessary? Do we need to take any kind of corrective action? There's different levels of management and everybody understands this. And looking at this, the wider it is, the more people that there are in those, in those jobs. So, for example, when you start talking about individual contributors, there's a lot more of the individual contributors. Then you have your first line managers, in other words, uh, supervisors and maybe ma first level managers. Then you have your middle managers and then your top managers. And when we talk about the functions, the functions are basically those various areas of the organization, you know, marketing, sales, finance, manufacturing, things like this. The top managers are responsible for more of the strategic view and the overall direction of the organization. Middle managers are responsible for putting together the policies and procedures and the plans in order to get things done. The first line managers are responsible for the execution, making sure that things do actually get done. And in, when you think about management, there's different managers. There's the functional and then the general manager. The functional manager is responsible for just one type of activity. So you might have somebody who's in manufacturing, okay, or maybe somebody who's in finance or R&D, that function of the business. They're focused more on expenses or on income, okay? So in other words, expenses, uh, if you're talking about research and development or manufacturing, they're spending money. And so they're responsible, the functional managers are responsible for the expenses. General managers have a tendency to be responsible for multiple organizational activities and typically are more along the lines of responsible for profit. So they might have both the expense aspect, responsibility for that, also the income aspect. You have different types of organizations and we'll talk about this throughout the, throughout the course. You have for-profit, not-for-profit, and then mutual benefit. For-profit organizations, okay, they're trying to make money. Nonprofits are not responsible for making money, but getting things done. So for example, Johnson County Community College is a nonprofit organization. And then mutual benefit organizations, things like labor unions, clubs, that sort of thing. They're together to advance interests of the members. You have three different roles as far as what managers actually play. You have your interpersonal, your informational, and your decisional roles. The interpersonal roles is working with people. You have to be able to work with people. The informational roles are making sure that people get the information that's necessary when they need it. It's kind of like the distributor in a car engine. And then you have your decisional roles, being able to make decisions in order to get things done. Now, Henry Mintzberg put together a classic 
article where he was talking about the myths and truths as far as what management is really all about. And one of the things that he found in his research was managers rely much more on verbal than written communication. Don't give a manager a long drawn out report. What they're looking for is tell me the Reader's Digest version of what it is that's going on. They tend to work long hours. I know as a manager, when I was managing people, I put in a lot more hours than the people that reported to me. And then the work is characterized by fragmentation, brevity, and variety. In other words, you have lots and lots of meetings. You're constantly interrupted throughout the day. So it's not just being able to focus in on one thing. You're having to work on a lot of different things throughout the day. The skills that managers need are technical, conceptual, and then human relations. The technical skills are being able to, say, run a machine. They, you understand how to run the machines. You can direct the people, train the people on how to do that. Conceptual skills is being able to think analytically. In other words, taking information and being able to see next steps, see impacts down the road, things like that. And then you have your human relation skills, being able to work with people. Senior managers, okay, those who are like, might be a, a senior vice president, don't need to know how to run a machine, but they really do need the conceptual skills, a high level of conceptual skills. First level managers need a high level of technical skills so that they can train people to do things, provide coaching when necessary, not as much as far as the analytical types of things. The thing is, all managers must have the human relations skills. All managers must be able to work together with people in order to get things done. To be an exceptional manager, there are various things to be considered. Managing for competitive advantage, information, diversity, globalization, ethics, sustainability, and then for yourself and others, happiness and meaningfulness. When we talk about competitive advantage, it's what can you do as an organization better than anybody else so that people buy your products or use your services? And it could be being responsive to customers. For example, um, organizations that do a great job as far as responding, such as American Express. American Express does a phenomenal job as far as customer service is concerned. Innovation. Apple has always been known for being very innovative as far as the products are concerned. Quality. When you think of quality, you think of things like Mercedes-Benz, very high quality products and things. And then efficiency. In other words, things like uh, companies like Amazon. They are so efficient as far as their getting products out to people, their, um, their supply chain, it's unbelievable. There, when you start thinking about managing for information technology, more and more people are buying things online. In other words, you think about the growth that Amazon has had as far as people buying now even groceries from them. When you start thinking about diversity, the, the population in the United States is really changing. In other words, the number of non-Hispanic whites are decreasing and the population is getting older. And there's going to be a completely different mix as far as the people who are in business as we go down the road. We also have to think about ethics. I'm sure you remember and have seen in the, the papers and in the news articles of the past, some of the folks, Bernie Madoff, Dennis Kozlowski, Bernie Evers. It's amazing how these folks were very, very smart people, very successful at one point in time, and ethics killed them, and now they're in prison. Also managing for sustainability. What are we doing to protect our resources? What are we doing to make it so that future generations can also have access to those resources? And then thinking about happiness and meaningfulness. What is it that makes us happy? What is it for the employees that report to us that makes them happy? What are they doing as far as business is concerned and their jobs that's meaningful? It's not just make work. It is making some sort of an impact. And if you want meaning in your life, think about the things that you're doing that you love doing. Are you going to continue to do that? How can you make that into a living?
finding a way to take your natural strengths into your personal and your work life and helping others. It's absolutely amazing how helping others can really impact our happiness and meaningfulness. We need to make sure that we are career ready. We understand some of the skills, knowledge, and abilities that are necessary for us to be successful. And some of the key things are being able to think analytically, being able to communicate well, and then being able to find and evaluate information. There was a study that was looking at employers and recent college graduates, thinking about, well, how ready are you for the workplace in these various areas? And you can see there was a huge difference between recent college graduates saying, 64% saying, man, they are ready to work together with others in teams. Employers are saying, no, only about, th only about 37% of them are saying, recent college graduates are ready to do that. There's a big difference there. There's another huge difference as far as ethics and decision making, where college grads think, oh yeah, I'm ready as far as my ethics are concerned and being able to make decisions. Less than a third of employers are saying that's true. And then look at the written communication and analytical thinking. A huge difference there as far as college graduates thinking they're ready and employers thinking they're not. And these are things to be thinking about what are you doing as far as improving your skills, knowledge, and abilities in those areas. The model for career readiness is basically taking those things as far as what is it that we know, what about our soft skills, the attitudes that we have about various things and work, and then other characteristics to achieve our career outcomes. When you start thinking about career readiness and the knowledge aspect, what are you doing to improve your competency around the functional and the task-based types of things? Information technology application. Now, a lot of people think, okay, I do all kinds of stuff with Facebook and things like that. That's not it. That might be new media literacy. That is not information technology application. What are you doing to learn more about programming languages? What are you doing to learn more about how to use Excel? Various things like that. A lot of soft skills are really necessary for you to be successful in your career. Being able to problem solve. Your communications is very, very important. We are judged by how well we communicate, both orally and written. The more that you can improve those skills, the better off you're going to be as far as your career is concerned. What are you doing as far as teamwork? What about providing leadership? Providing leadership is not necessarily being promoted into management. It's what are you doing as an individual to provide leadership to others? Your decision making, your networking is going to be very, very important. The best jobs come from networking with other people, not from cruising the Internet and responding to Internet ads for jobs. Our attitudes are going to be very, very important. In other words, accepting responsibility for our actions is going to be key. I see a big gap there in a lot of people. Being self-motivated as far as trying to get things done, not expecting somebody to motivate us, motivating ourselves. Having a positive approach, managing your own career. Do not expect someone else to manage your career for you. You are responsible for managing your career. Then you have some of the other characteristics. What kind of work ethic do you have? You stick to some of the things that are necessary in order to get things done. What about resilience? Maybe you had a bad day. How do you bounce back? Self-awareness, knowing what your strengths and weaknesses are. What are you doing for others as far as service to them? These are all things that some of the other characteristics that are necessary for career success. And there's basically six key ways to develop that career readiness. Build that self-awareness. In other words, get feedback from others, honest feedback as far as where your strengths are, where your weaknesses are, and be honest with yourself. Learn from some of these educational activities that you have opportunities to do. Model others who, are, who possess those competencies that you want to learn. Learn from the on-the-job activities. Every time you're doing something in a particular job, one of the things you may want to do is step back and say, what did I learn from that? 
seek experience from other folks, and try new things. Most of you are very, very young. Experiment, try different things. You never know where your passion will actually be coming from. So these are some of the key points from the chapter. If you have questions, please give me a call.